one Kamal, two guys, and some horror, and some Jared. Today, of course, I, one of your hosts, Clark, am joined with the lovely Curtis. Say hello, Curtis. How sweet of you, Clark. You're welcome. And we're also joined by a our first recurring guest, the uh, gorgeous Jared Ronceval. Hey, guys. Uh, super glad to be back. Uh, it's good to have we're you. happy to have you. So let's let's uh, kind of jump into this real quick. I don't I don't really want to talk too much about like the movie be, aside from like how are you guys doing right now? I'm doing ahead. pretty well. Man, yeah, just a uh, full quarantine over here. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I was sort of lucky. We we stocked up on toilet paper, rice, and beans like like a month before all this hit. So we're just laying low. You're pretty smart, man. I don't I don't know how you predict all this stuff, but <laughs> boy, how. Luck of the draw, man. Luck of the yeah. draw. We're doing good. Here we're doing good over here. My wife's stuff. gonna, um, you know, we're we're due May eleventh, so she's she's uh, pretty pregnant and pretty uncomfortable. So staying inside yeah. and whatnot, trying to be as safe as we can and and just prep as much as we can for before the baby gets here. How are you staying entertained right now? A lot of Uno. Uh, a lot of. A lot of uh, Uno. A lot That's of not TV. enough to keep a woman pleased, Curtis. <laughs> I, I don't know. If I let her win, she's pretty happy. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm here in uh, Sierra Vista visiting my brother. And uh, we're out. So Jared and I work at the same company. And we're all working remotely right now because of the quarantine. I believe Curtis is as well at his company. So That's correct. Uh, hoping all of you are in good health as well. Hoping, you know you were there's no stress anyhow i, I kind of want to like can we just talk about this movie real quick and just what it is like i'd we're, love to we're hear talking what about you Midsummer, think it is by the way <laughs> it's i don't i don't know if i can describe this as a horror film or just like a psychedelic experience i'm so glad that you're having you know that that's where your head is at because the first two times I saw the film, that's exactly what what I was thinking. Like, what did I just watch? Uh, Ari Aster really, he he absolutely killed it. You know, and I, I ended up actually having to go find uh, some of his, some of his interviews so I could put you know what I saw into words um, because it is so like unique. You know, this is the guy who did Hereditary. Mm -hmm. um, he does kind of. I, I... So the, anyhow, the, kind of the theme of this, this movie came out 2019. I thought, I thought it was older than that, but it's, I had never heard of this. And I'm surprised I have it because this is crazy. Amazon has been this telling me to watch this movie for, I don't know, I feel like since it came out, it's, if, I feel like it's been on Amazon Prime now for a while. And if not, um, Amazon Prime rent maybe for a while. And now it's free uh to watch so i was really happy that jared wanted to pick it because it was perfect timing while we're all on quarantine but i've refused to watch this movie and hereditary because of the lack of horror themes i've gotten from reviews and whatnot that i've read so i was very like i was like eh whatever it'll be fine it'll be okay but i really won't think much of it but i was so right. wrong i was so wrong this movie is now like one of my favorite horror movies um we'll see if it stands the test of time like i'll probably watch it again in a month to see if i still get that same feeling but man like some of the scenes and and like i'm sorry to fanboy right now over this but the cinematography was phenomenal the score of right. the movie disturbingly perfect and the story was insanely good well, there was a story Oh yes! Uh, <laughs> oh yes! There was there was definitely some under there was like some background, but there wasn't really any foreground for. I mean, besides like blessing crops and herbs and finding a new family, but there wasn't really anything. Kind of being built up, it was more of like a destruction, and then kind of putting someone in a new home. I if we kind of explore it that way, that I'd be cool with, but I don't know, man. This movie so makes me feel uneasy. But at the same time, kind of like, yeah, I don't really like any of those people. Definitely. And uh, if, I, if I can just interject here really quick, uh, I, yeah, I didn't know how to categorize it either. And, and again, I had to find Ari Aster's interviews and 
he describes it um, when he when he's on uh, in interviews and whatnot and trying to push them. Uh, he sort of described it as a as a, a full core for every except for Danny, the main character, right? And he right. He, he described her specifically as like a fairy tale, which is really interesting. Uh, Curtis in cinematography and everything. There's this weird like juxtaposition in there. it's this horrible undertone of things that are that are going on uh, where they go for Midsummer, and then at the same time, everything looks so bubbly and nice, like a fairy tale, right? out of bloom. Uh, uh, I, that, that's one of the home as well. That uh, that contract. Yeah. So, I mean, I agree with you. Like the beginning of the movie has that very clean. Uh, cinematography as we're following Danny through the beginning of her struggles and then as soon as they get to the cultist uh, you know settlement everything changes to this very fairy tale like bubbly I think bubbly is a great description um, I was gonna say like earthy toned uh, everything is living kind of a feel very it's that vibrant. psychedelic piece that that I, I love <laughs> Clark's description of so much before we kind of jump in and we we're talking about a mixture of things we're talking about psychedelics we're talking about how how the earthy tones of the film the colors of the film but i want to go real quick this movie came out in 2019 and the, they had a budget of like 10 million or the estimated amount and they only made about 6.5 million on opening weekend with a gross of like 27 so i wouldn't call this film like a major success but it like kind of to double down on what we were talking about earlier this this movie is magnificent they did a really good job of kind of like showing a struggling relationship with a girl who, you know, she cares about her boyfriend and her boyfriend who just kind of doesn't know how he feels about her and kind of wishy-washy. Yeah. So... yeah actually, yeah. Go ahead, Jer. Oh, I was just going to say, that was one of the, another one things that they did really well in this film. Um, he, the acting, um, that, that dichotomy between I, I would say two main characters, uh, Dan and Christian, uh, really just uh, it it echoed real life for 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 me. I think I've ever been inside of like toxic relationship, you know, where one wants to get out, the other person maybe needs a lot. Um, I think you just did a really really good job playing that, and it was an excellent part of the part of. The... Definitely. So like, but her so her parents died. And her sister commits suicide, and she's 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 already feeling guilty about having to lean on her boyfriend to talk to. Like she feels guilty about it, and he's he's a complete douche to her. Like he doesn't care, he doesn't listen to her, doesn't validate anything she says. Um, he's kind of a he's kind of a thief. He's lazy. Like we get all of these characteristics from him, and. For whatever reason, she's staying with him, and I don't know. Like I don't understand her motivation in kind of sticking with this guy, right now. So, I think she stays with him because her sister does this kind of suicide note thing. I mean, at least this is what we get from the beginning of the movie, right? She she says, "Oh, I'm going to go kill myself." She runs to her boyfriend Christian. Um, Christian tells her, "You know, everything's going to be fine. It's just a." Know, she's faking it whatever she'll be fine and then a couple weeks go by and her sister goes back to normal so her sister is definitely struggling with some mental issues um something is not right she's she's battling depression maybe maybe she's bipolar i don't know but her boyfriend seems like the hero to her in danny's mind because every time she runs to him he calms her down walks her back from the ledge and then her sister gets better so to her, she's seeing positive, okay, my sister's fine. Okay, now she's not. I run to Christian. Okay, he told me everything's going to be fine. Oh, look, my sister's fine again. But then this time, like, honestly, I don't understand why she stays this time when he's doing the same exact thing where he's like, she does, you know, does this kind of shit all the time. And, you know, you know, she'll be fine or whatever. And this time she's not fine. No, instead, she actually, go ahead. I don't think he's talking her off a ledge, man. I think he's just being lazy in the relationship, just giving her the lazy boyfriend advice. He's not like putting any effort into it. And no matter, he does a very good job of showing that through his acting. But no matter like, that was what, very well done. 
no matter what he does, she's allowing it. She's also not recognizing it to be lazy. She's let, she's, oh, you're right. Like she literally says, oh, Christian, you're right. So in my opinion, like he is a bad boyfriend. Okay? <coughs> He's a bad significant other. We can, we can, yeah. there's no disagreement there. Where I 100%. think, unfortunately, where I think the relationship is flawed is Danny isn't standing up for herself and going, he's bad for me. I need to leave him. Instead, she keeps relying on him for what? I don't know. I don't see it. I don't get it. But it's like that weird, it's, it's too many times you see relationships where the, the female character rely or the female relies too much on the male and thinks that he's doing everything right when other people, friends, family, whatever, can see that the guy is just bad. And vice versa. I mean, it happens both ways, right? I'm not trying to pick on anyone or anything. But for some reason, there's this mental like cog that just gets stuck where it's like, no, 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 Christian's a good guy. He's doing all these things for me. But in reality, he's not. He's just not. And I don't, I don't know what it is, but it leads to, uh, in my opinion, her just never letting herself actually grow and get out there and leave, you know, leave him. Get, get rid of Christian. I think that would have been a much better choice for her. I don't know. <clears throat> And I, I will say too, I feel like, uh, especially in the, the tragedy at the beginning where, where Danny loses her family. I don't know if I'm jumping around if we want to no, cover all that. <laughs> but um, uh, especially following something like that, I feel like her character just need, needed somebody in her life, some, some kind of, you know, some kind of rock, right? And Christian, at the other end of that, I mean, you can tell off the bat, that's not what he was looking for in the relationship at all. Um, but it's one of those things, you know, like uh, we were sort of talking about being in a, in a toxic relationship where maybe you're not, there's not enough communication. People aren't saying what needs to be said. Um, he should have been upfront about the whole thing, but I think, I think his character didn't want to create more drama by saying, Oh, Hey, uh, by the way, I'm breaking up with you. This is too much, you know? Yeah. Like sack up, be a man, you know, mm -hmm. like if you genuinely don't yeah. want to be in the relationship with someone, be honest. And I feel like Christian wasn't, was not man enough in that situation. Wasn't, let's remove the sex from it. Wasn't human enough to, to be honest with her and, and tell her he didn't want to be in the relationship anymore. That's, that's what frustrates many, me with that situation. I agree with you. And how many of us have been in that situation where we're with, we're dating someone who we didn't really want to, to be with. Like it's, it's something you just got to do. You rip off the band aid and you end it. And regardless of the situation, there's never like a better or worse time. Just, no, uh, never. Yeah. Yeah. He, was, he was definitely very slummy about it. Um, and and I, I think that added uh, added to the movie sort of, right? When when you're watching scenes where they're, they're talking to each other and they're having a disagreement, um, you, you can cut the tension in the room with a knife every single time. I, I think it, it plays really well to the film. Yeah, how she how much time down. goes by yeah. between Danny's parents dying from the sister killing them and then the suicide? How much time passes between that and then the party that Christian um I almost want to say drags Danny to. Like he I, she definitely feels guilty that she's not going, so she forces herself to go, right? Like how much time passes between there? He kind of so if you watch the scene where he he asks, gets her to go like he gaslights her into going. He gaslights her. Like the way he kind of talks down to her, and he's like, "It'll make you feel better." It was something he wanted to do, and so he kind of manipulated her into going to this party with him, which backfires. So like that's so good in his face. Well, it, it's his fault because he he said, "Yeah, I invited Danny," because why why did he? First of all, like he didn't tell his girlfriend about this trip he was planning on going because he didn't want her to go. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's such a sleazy, lazy fuck, man. I, like, I think it's so a little bit. Scenes. I think it's a little bit more than that too. I mean, he he definitely didn't want her to go, right? I don't think he planned on being with her in two weeks. If her parents hadn't been murdered and her sister committed suicide, do you really think Christian would have stayed with Danny? Yeah, I think he's. I think he's just weak. I think he would have broken up with her person. over the phone right before he gets on the plane to go on that trip. He's that much he of a sleazeball. <laughs> you just know what? Like, yeah. Fair Dude, enough. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to bag on the characters too much. I mean, let me tell you this. 
the fact that I hate Christian's character so much just shows how great of a job that actor did in the movie. Well, they they even add to it, though. Like, no, I agree 100%. He did a great job of playing the scummy boyfriend. I cannot think of anyone doing a better job than that. Can I tell you my favorite character of the movie? Tell me your favorite character. And then you guys can tell me yours, okay? I loved right. Pele. Pele awesome. He yeah. was the, the perfect... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to call him a bad guy. No, Dude, I don't know. I don't guy. know what to call him. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's another thing about the film, right? Because the cult, the community would call it, they... I mean, they could very clearly think that what they were doing was evil they they were a, a community in quotes steeped in tradition right it was just mm -hmm. they're as fair as they could be for a community of people that are probably going to kill you <laughs> um paley was awesome i totally agree he he, he killed it i gotta say uh, danny's my favorite character nice like despite all the shit that happens to her and how weird she gets like she's the most uh relatable character in the entire the entire film like for me personally as i get Definitely. it yeah we'll yeah, say I, I for, as much as I love Pele, uh, for as much as i love danny uh, um man she she really the show uh what's what's the actress's name i'm sorry uh florence pew yeah florence pew absolutely killed that role um the the look of sorrow on her face 99 percent of the time was so perfect uh for that character i i loved it I thought she was just frowning the whole time. I felt so bad the entire movie. Like, even when she's walking to, and we're bouncing around a lot, so forgive us, but when she's walking over to the ritual room where she knows something bad is happening, but the girls are trying to keep Still her away, bad. right? Her, her just, she doesn't know what ha is happening in that room, but the look the of room? sadness, yes. But the look of sadness on her face the entire walk over, I was like, oh my god, I want to, I like, I want to cry for you right now because what you're about to see is going to put you right back into that hole of despair that you were in after your parents died. You know what I mean? Like, I felt so bad. Oh, dude, but when she, when she sees what's going on in the orgy room, which I don't feel I want to spoil. No. <laughs> just, uh, no. just anyhow, like... Can I give a fun fact for you? I don't know, man. That the crying they did together. Oh, that my was gosh. oh my gosh. So that threw me off. I was so weirded out by that. I was like, if I were high while watching this movie, I would, I'd be like, I'd be on the edge of my seat. Such a wild and scene, definitely. Dude, fun fact: whole film I'm pretty wild. sure there were 24 boobs in that scene. <laughs> dude, there, there were quite, quite a few. Are you counting double digits? Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought. I just, you know, they can't they can't cast like anyone younger than eighteen to to show nudity. But I thought that girl was like fifteen. She looked like she was fifteen. Super that, young. Like, that creeped me out. Yeah, so, it was it was a bit it was a bit hard to watch, uh, for me personally. Like it was just because it, it's not. Yeah, I can see that. I don't know. It's just weird culturally. I don't even think in that way, right? I'm I'm not a cultist. I don't. Uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't do half the things that 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 uh, community was doing. Um, Dude, but yeah, somebody your your pubic hairs and your blood. Oh, oh my man. god, I wrote that down. So there's a there's a potion, there's a love potion that these girls could give you, and that's what Clark's referencing. And basically, there's these beautiful paintings in the beginning of the movie that I, I wrote down a note for. Um, basically, if you chop off your pubes um, and mix that in like a sandwich of some sort right so they made meat pies and that's put what she put it food. in and then if you if you catch your blood from your period and mix that into like a drink that basically is a potion concoction that will make someone fall in love with you that's what this community believes dude he called it a love potion and he called it a love story is what Pele said he said it's a very cute love story <laughs> I was just like, "What the heck, no, man?" No, no, no. I, I don't want to want to enforce jumping around too much, but I, I have to call out too the the scene where they're all sitting down to eat. They did such a good job of shooting that because they they force you, the viewer, to to look at them all sitting on this table, sort of bickering amongst themselves, 
and it, it sort of hands over earlier on it, it sort of uh, hints that uh, Christian's uh, meat pie had been set aside and tampered with and then at the same time if you're looking closely at the drinks uh, it looks like lemonade lemonade, lemonade, yeah. lemonade, 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 raspberry lemonade, 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 red grape And he's juice. drinking it too. <laughs> he's like, I think you put pubes in my, in my yeah. food. He's like, yes. Oh yeah, Mark, right? I've heard about that. The dude from uh, We Are The Millers or whatever, that's the only thing I think I know him from, but um, he's like, Oh, I know what you're talking about. Dude, dude is that a pube? <laughs> and they're all like, shh, 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 hey, 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 shh, shh, shh. Dude, I, that kid was such a such a douche nozzle peed yeah. on the ancestral tree and you got like all defensive about it it's like, like you know what, though? They, they ended up whatever dude it's just a tree it's just like dude you gotta be respectful hey he learned his lesson no he didn't learn his lesson he just died <laughs> i don't i don't know man I, I, you become one of the offerings. i have so many i have so many questions about like all of this shit and i'm i don't even let's want go to spoil the ending bring bring like, on the questions I'll ask the fucking questions. Like, let's talk about, okay, so let's talk about the imagery first of all. Like, when they're eating the mushrooms, uh, the first high, like, we see her, her like, the grass kind of growing through her hands, and then there's the scene where she's drinking the tea, and then we get more imagery of, like, her kind of becoming part of the earth. Yeah. And then you have the scene where she becomes the May Queen, and she's kind of moving the leaves on the chair. And then at the very end, like she's blessing the earth and doing all of that weird stuff. And she's wearing all of those flowers. I was kind of thinking like with all the imagery of her becoming like part of the earth, why didn't they just turn her into a tree? Ha. I think, uh, I think some of that was just her tripping ball. They were all tripping balls the entire film. And I think that was part of the, what the cult was trying to do to, to, to make sure people were pliable. But I think uh, for, for Danny specifically, uh, I felt like, you know, being part of, you know, the, the, the grass growing out of her and, and being in that giant flower getup uh, at the end, I think that was supposed to, to, to signify um, uh, a, new, uh, a new life for her in some ways, right? She, she started the film I, losing a family and, and at the end she, she ended gaining one in a way. She got rooted or something like that. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot. I agree with you. That's, that's a great perspective. I absolutely love this this film in a lot of ways, and I hate it in others. But it's just, oof. you know, it's every time I hear you guys say like say something bad, I'm over here nodding. None of you can see this, but, but <laughs> these are the exact same. Watching with Ari Aster, he actually said this film was pretty confusing. <laughs> So I've, I've heard, I've never seen Hereditary, but I've heard that this is the exact opposite of Hereditary. Like this is shot in, you know, midsummer, um, and Hereditary is shot in like winter fall or something like that. And it's like supposed to be the exact contrast of that movie. Um, anyone seen both of these and give me any insight on that? Cause I, I'm actually really curious to watch Hereditary now that I've seen this. You, you've seen it, right, Jared? Yeah. 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 I've seen both of them. Um, so Hereditary, I loved. Um, I don't know about about the seasons. I, I would have to rewatch them to. to, to I can say they are uh, they are pretty much polar opposites uh, as far as films go. Hereditary, I think, leans more towards a, a like a classic horror where there's definitely some some uh, supernatural themes, um, and and this one, uh, Midsummer, is much more grounded. I think in reality, or at least what reality could could be in a in a messed mm -hmm. up part of Sweden. <laughs> Dude, I, I yeah. or Hungary. The suicide. Hungary. Where it was the filmed. suicide scene. <laughs> Shit. Okay, oh, so man. Let's there are two people from London. There's there's Simon and there's uh, Connie. Mm -hmm. And they're they're visiting from London. Like one of their friends brought them in there. And there are these old people who get up to the top of a very tall cliff and they the first one jumps off face first her head just explodes and it's just, just gross. And then the two British people are just like, they gasp and they're freaked out and they, they're done. They've had enough. Like a guy jumps down feet first and his legs break and the guy just beats him in with the hammer. Why did he jump like, yeah. down feet first? Like, that's what I want to know. Like that, come well, on, man. 
I don't think everybody, he had practice, man. <laughs> everybody screamed with him, right? I think it was done on purpose. I think, like, did you see them all taking turns to hit him in the face of the hammer? Yeah. The giant ass mallet? Jeez. I, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe he has to jump feet first. I don't know. But in the comment about practice, like, he's old enough and he's been in the community long enough. He's seen two other people do this, you know, years prior or whatever, right? Or no, wait, this only yeah. happens once every 90 years? Is that what they said? 90 years, no. yeah. Well, so, every 90 so, years. So he wouldn't have. The, the midsummer itself was every 90 years, but but their their cycle, um, and the movie, uh, for, for the listeners, they have uh, this this community, um, the way they treat human life is they, they, they treat it like the seasons. So what is it, uh, for, for until you're 18, that's, that's your spring, uh, 18 to whatever is your summer, blah, 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 all the way up to winter and the end of your life up till you're 72. Yeah. Um, at once you turn 72, yeah. you, you, you commit suicide pretty much. Oh, you jump off the cliff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this gotcha. would have happened every, probably every, every few years for, for the, uh, older people in the community. Correct. So that makes sense. That so, makes I mean, sense. he, he would have seen someone jump off that cliff and, you're right, though, Clark, to a, to a point. I think I think you're right. Like, he's showing to the newcomers, right? Because these are people who were brought specifically for this reason, to be a part right. of the community mm-hmm. and to weed out possibly anyone who uh, isn't worth being in the community. Yeah, I was thinking that. But you think the, 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 the priestess, she's like, didn't you tell them? And they're like, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. And those two British people who were the least deserving of any retribution were the first to die. Because they can't like, go tell what's going on. That's I, the that community may may covering it up. I don't know, man. Like, Because I don't know if they would have allowed them in. Because going back to what we, we were talking about earlier, Curtis and I were talking about like whether or not like they, this was like a test run for, for new members or if these were for like sacrifices. And it looked like it was the latter rather than the former. And it just looked like Danny was lucky enough to have been chosen. Yeah. So kind of both actually, if, if, uh, if, if you go back, they, they did pepper in some clues. Um, like there's one point about halfway through the film, um, they're testing how B is such a small community. Occasionally they have to bring outsiders in so that they can reproduce and not have any, um, uh, uh, negative effects. I mean, there's some other aspects dealing with that in the film, I, but uh, I'll, I'll I feel that. like that's why the orgy room happened. That explanation, <laughs> yeah. was no inbreeding. There. But uh, I will say also, then at, at the very end of the film, um, they they touch on it a little bit. Uh, their belief: every 90, they sacrifice um, people from within the community and for what new blood, and then one person who's selected by that year's May Queen. Yes. Um, in order to drive away the dark one. Yeah, I right. mean, it. it's painted pretty brilliantly at the end. But watching this movie all the way through, you have no idea what's really happening until it just happens. And I'll have to rewatch it, to be honest. It goes, I mean, it goes 0 to 60 in the last 35, 40 minutes, I'd say. Basically, uh, after, <laughs> after Christian has left that uh, orgy room, I mean, it goes... 60 to like a thousand miles an hour in the last 15 20 minutes of the movie well there's the dance party and all that shit everything in this movie is a trip as soon as you get to them being in uh sweden yeah so i want to touch on um the thesis portion of this because i thought that that was really well done so pele lures basically lures josh uh and christian in because they're going for school study that's their choice, right? Mark comes along because he's a friend and thinks he's going to party up and swing in uh, Sweden and bang a bunch of cool, hot, blonde chicks. Danny only comes because they feel bad for her, um, and she's got nothing better to do in life. But that's basically the four Americans that Pele brings, right? I'm not missing anyone there. I, I think that's right, yeah. And then Ingram, or whatever that guy's name is, Pele's brother, but not really his brother. Um, they call each other brothers in the in the community it's not like a weird incest thing here but um could be but uh he brings the two brits so that's six total possible um what are they called offerings for for the for the midsummer and i don't think 
Danny was ever meant for a offering. And the reason why I think that is because Pele mentions multiple times leading up to all of the drama how beautiful Danny is and how they have this festival, you know, in Sweden. And then they have this uh, kind of uh, competition for the most prettiest girl, right? He like he there's three or four times where he brings that up and kind of talks with her about it and how she could genuinely win. He thinks she would be beautiful, uh, you know, the most beautiful girl there to win. Now, whether or not they did that on purpose to kind of foreshadow it or whatever, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it seemed it seemed really well done to me. I thought thought Danny was I, definitely not going to be one to get killed. And, you know, I, 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 I agree. I, to that. I was, I was going to say, I, uh, I don't want to call it luck that <laughs> that she ended up there. Um, but, uh, but it is, I, th I think it was just a, a, a stroke of luck in a way that things, uh, unfolded the way they did. Right. Um, otherwise, it, yeah, it would have been the three Americans and then the two Brits for, for a total of five offerings. And she just happened to be in a situation, um, that, you know, you know, Pele liked her. She happened to be in a situation where they could try and bring her into the community. Even even crazier. So I started thinking about this after the movie because I, like I said, I really loved this movie. I thought it, it's one of the best movies from 2019 for sure. Possibly one of the best, in my opinion, in the 2010s uh, for horror. Um, so check this out. So Pele brings these people. He knows who he's bringing. Um, he brings a guy and a girl who are already dysfunctional as a relationship. He knows that because he's friends with Christian. And Christian talks about how he wants to leave her all the time. So Pele knows the door's open for Danny because Christian will walk away. Christian uh, is a good strapping American man. That's what they say, at least, right? The Swedens do. And that's why Pele brings him. He gets picked to be the one to breed with the girl, with one of the girls. He knows one of the girls has been accepted. She just got approved to mate. That's how the rules go. So he already knows those two are taken. The other two, Josh and Mark, well, Mark's just an idiot, so we know we're going to get rid of him. Josh is smart, but too smart for his own good. He wants to research and learn. Well, the community is not going to let that happen because they can't let the secrets out about the cult. The other two Brits, those are just the other offerings. There are your four offerings. One is for breeding. One is the May Queen. Boom. Pele's a genius. That's why he's called the Unclouded or whatever and gets the special hat. Applaud? No applaud? I'll give you that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. He also... He also got in, uh, got in a, a, a pretty long, pretty long kiss right after the May Queen competition. Oh, yeah, that was that's what I was gonna bring up. I was like, no, she kissed back, man. She was into it. Mm -hmm. They, it, yeah. it's all solidified. She's married to Pele now. They, uh, they have little creepy babies who try to bring <laughs> other children in from other villages, so they can murder them. And yeah, because those up in little jester's outfits and make the girls boys. could have totally let her win. You know what I mean? Could have let Danny win. That game was a joke. You're dancing around. You're drinking some booze, whatever. They're knocking into they're each other. High is, they're high, man. They're high as all get out on that magical peyote tea. Yeah, but they're having full conversation about how, you know, I, I don't know. It seemed very rigged to me. Um, they're that all the girls... spinning around and stuff, man. Yeah. I don't know. And then they, and then they take Danny. I think Danny. we're going to have to have a dance competition. But then they take Danny away so that way she doesn't see Christian banging the chick in the orgy room right away. I don't know, dude. Like, that, the orgy room, they, they just didn't want her to feel pain. Because remember, when they brought, took her out, they took her to another building and they cried with her. Yeah. They, and they I mean, showed that they're expressing each other's emotion. They mourn with you. They, there was, they, make, there, they feel what you feel. There was a really cool write-up of how that moment, that screaming, that pain, that sorrow ties back to the initial pain and sorrow and screaming that she has when she finds out her parents die and Christian's holding her. You know what I mean? Like there was someone who wrote up like a, I don't know, compare and contrast kind of article and it was really well um, thought out. I, I really love the fan theories and, and stuff like that for this movie. I think um, some someone speculated that what if Pele actually killed Danny's parents and sister and made it look like a murder suicide to basically send them what? all into a spiral so that way they'd take you know they'd go to Sweden a lot easier that that's one's crazy. a little more far-fetched um that's crazy no that, that's that's a no <laughs> I don't know that's a no-go ghost rider if you read it you might change your mind 
Yeah, that's like, no, no, we're not going there, man. I mean, whether that's you, like, maybe you don't want to go there, but someone went there. All I right. feel like um, there's no, <laughs> there's no way this, there's no indication of any of this being premeditated. And this just feels like a reach with somebody saying, oh, this could have happened. Sure. Why not? Oh, I think happened, there's tons of premeditation. It, I'm not saying the parents' murder is pre premeditated, other than the sister, obviously. But... I feel like Pele earnestly wanted to give her a home, and there was no, like, creepy, like, I want to be your husband vibes behind it. Agreed. I would say from so... from Pele's perspective, he was just trying to take his four, you know, his four people, and he, he premeditated what he wanted to do with them once they got to the cultists, but there wasn't any premeditation before that. I would agree. Yeah. I didn't recognize all of the uh, animal people in the house, by the way, the one that burns at the end. Okay. So I recognized most of them. Um, one of them, I don't know who it was, and that was like an older person. It looked so like. let's go through so by description. Or go ahead, Jared. Oh, I was going to say, um, uh, two of them were the, 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 the two people that committed suicide earlier in the film. Right. And then right. the two were the, uh, uh, the two other living, um, members of the community. Yep. One was Ingram who brought the Brits. And then I right. think the other one was the guy who was angry at Mark for peeing on the ancestral tree, if I remember right. But that's just based off of, he looked like that guy. I'm not, he was a nobody I... character basically. I don't know. And, and uh, I do they say, uh, gave honor. Sorry, what was that? No, they gave honor to them. Was all. Yeah. Mm. Oh, definitely. And and I, I do want to call out really, uh, <laughs> uh, really quickly, um, when they're choosing the fifth person, um, they have this weird. Uh, it's like a, a, a contraption you'd see for like a lottery where they they spin the wheel and the, and then a ball falls out. And it went from this weird, like, hey, we're, we're going to put people up for ritual sacrifice to almost like a game show. What did you say? Torbjorn, come on down. And then everybody waved their hands like they do. Um, super funky. Yes. It, it definitely had a weird moment. I didn't really care for that part of the movie so much because you know what's going to happen. Like, you know Danny's, as the May Queen gets to pick between that selected ball and someone else and because we know who that someone else is we know exactly who she's going to pick especially following what she saw um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's a, i'm just saying i'm not saying it's set up but it looks to be set up you know what i mean i yeah i feel like everything here was going to happen but she you know she made her choice on who the fifth person was i don't think she made a bad one dude that look she gave him too She's just like glaring at him. Don't cheat on your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, don't don't cheat on your girlfriend. I loved the smile at the end of that movie that she gives. Dude, that was that was the indication of like her being part of the community now. I feel. She is a beautiful woman, okay? And they picked a really great person to show all emotion. When she was sad and 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 freaking out, you felt that pain, right? When she was happy, you felt that radiant happiness, or at least I did when I was watching this. And she's a great I, ugly crier. I, she great she ugly definitely crier. is. She cried a lot. Great ugly crying. Well, um, do you guys was, have anything not... else specific you want to talk about for the movie? I'm not trying to rush us. I just want to make sure we're, you know. Uh... No, I want to talk about the ugly crying. No. Um, All right, let's get. Honestly, into it. I really do think we need to have a dance competition where we spin around like that. How many people do you only... think we need to have in that dance? I look, it doesn't matter as long as there's alcohol involved, we'll get enough people. But also a real quick call out, we're we're social dis distancing right now. So as long as we're yeah, all we'll, six feet apart, then I think we're good. We'll we'll, we'll do it via webcam, you know. Yeah. We could, we could do a Discord call. They do it up to how many people now? Twenty? <laughs> do these no, trying to do it? At least three. Uh, That's all we need right now. Or falls down answer. drunk first. We're gonna have to use alcohol instead of peyote though. I hope that's okay with you guys. <laughs> um, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. we're gonna move on now to uh, your fun facts, and fun trivia. facts, and trivia. Which honestly, I don't have anything for this movie. If you guys have any fun facts what and the trivia, fuck, man, it's... why are we moving on then? Because <laughs> we don't cause... even have anything. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. 
Um, I'm just joking with you. There, there's a lot of different things written up, but a lot of it, or a lot of the things I found were all uh, fan fiction or hearsay. There wasn't a lot yeah. of like, oh, did you know this? I don't, I don't know. D maybe Jared has some cool fun fact and trivia that he might know off the top of his head. Fun facts and trivia. This is a fun movie. And go watch it. I, I like it. Dude, I, I if I could have, I'm going to be honest right here. If I got a people scream and moan with me when I'm in pain, that'd be very helpful, to be honest. So, <laughs> like, there's some very beautiful things in this film. Like, the sense of community was amazing. The murdering and kind of putting someone's lungs and having them still breathe when they're poking out of their back, that was a little creepy. But otherwise, you know, there's yeah, good you and know, bad. I mean, I guess, I guess sort of here's a fun fact-ish kind of a thing. Uh, maybe you guys noticed it. Um, again, this was from one of the interviews I saw with, with Ari Aster. Um, where he talks about it being so, sort of a, a folk horror for for. 90% of the people and then for Danny it's it's almost like a fairy tale right um right I guess he he, he went out of his way uh because you sort of you go into the film expecting people to die right mm -hmm. um so he he purposely took that away from you um in that he takes all of the folk horror deaths where somebody would have been murdered to be sacrificed and he does that off screen so you never actually see that happen until the very end with with the fire right um that's just right. a you know just a well, the magic uh, dust in the guy's face. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pixie What dust. was that? I don't know. It was glowing golden dust that he blows right in his face. It, it was just, a he, paralyzing dust to put his ass in a wheelchair. That was it. That's all it needed to be. Yeah. And he was still totally, you know, awake for everything that followed, which is probably the most terrifying thing I've, <laughs> I've seen on screen for, for a minute. It didn't seem like he was objecting to anything, though. He was just kind of, like, groggy. All right. Well, let's move on to something I think has been long anticipated. What is coming soon for horror in April? So we haven't done a coming soon in a couple of months with all the craziness and everything that's going on. Uh, so there are four things that are coming soon to horror fans um i think a lot of these April. are going to be pushed back to be honest well one of them's digital so that one won't get pushed back okay but so the new mutants comes out in april 2020 and it's being we labeled as, as action horror, horror sci-fi i thought that that was very weird and i thought you I, would think so too i don't believe it yeah i don't believe it i'll believe it when i see it i yeah i just i mean i don't get it but we'll find out. I'll, I'll definitely can I, watch it. <laughs> can I ask uh, what what what's the? Uh, uh, do you have a synopsis for that one? I, have, I haven't heard of the new the new mutants actually. It's a yeah. comic book uh, crew. I think it's Marvel, isn't it, or is it DC? It's Marvel because it's X Men based. Uh, new mutants. Oh. So it's five young mutants just discovering their abilities while held in a secret facility. Get their will uh, against their will. Fight to escape their past sins and save themselves. So. Um, I'm oh. not sure why it's horrific just yet, but based on this trailer I'm looking at right now with um, the lovely Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones, she looks pretty frightened and terrified. So I don't, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, I'm gonna judge this film. Now we have to watch it. That's boom, gonna boom, have to boom. be watched. We're gonna have to discuss this. B -b 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 bonus episode. And if it's not a horror film. Then if it we'll, is not a horror film, we'll I'm love it. Very disappointed, but we'll be disappointed. Uh, okay, we'll the it, Lurker is being released on digital uh, this April. Okay. It brings a new slasher to digital, so I'm not really new sure slasher. what that one's about yet. But I'm excited. Anybody want to hear the synopsis? Do it. I yeah. Why not? A group of high school students celebrating their final performance of Romeo and Juliet begin to slowly disappear one at a time. As students and faculty begin to die at the hands of a savage killer, it's a race against time for the cast to find the killer and escape with their lives or face that final curtain call. So it sounds super sounds cheesy. Like Polaroid. Super, super cheesy, but uh, I, I don't know. I can't stop myself. It's going to be on my list. Okay. You know what? You let us know. I will watch. You know, I, I, I don't want to watch it. 
<clears throat> well, you'll watch, watch it if I guess if I make you watch it, right? Yeah, I'll watch it. Unfortunately, this one has been um, delayed indefinitely, um, along with Saw. But uh, Saw was not coming out in April initially. Uh, but Annabelle uh, is is delayed indefinitely. Another it's, Annabelle movie? I'm not sure if it has to do with Annabelle. It's Antebellum. But I, oh, Antebellum. No, yeah. no, no, no. You're right. Okay. This one um, looked kind of cool because it, it deals with like an author kind of thing. Very similar to Hush. Um, not the whole deaf mute thing. but You know what? I've heard of this. I actually want to see it. Me too. The bellum. Me too. Um, this one seems to still be on track to get released. I don't know who's going to see it in theaters. Maybe we'll get a quick to video, um, like we did for Invisible Man. Uh, now on Amazon Prime, you can rent it for twenty dollars. Um, but I'm. This is probably the most anticipated one I have for all year. It's Antlers. What is? Um, oh, Antlers. Okay. Yeah, which was supposed to come out Why? April fourteenth. Why is that? Why the short story, to this? the short story that Antlers is based off of, uh, was really good to me. It was a lot of fun to read, um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just I really liked the short story. Um, the trailer was pretty gripping, which is what made me go read the short story. Um, it is and, a Guillermo del Toro film. Uh, Antlers. Yeah, I'm seeing director is Scott Cooper, writer is Nick and produced by Guillermo. Del Toro. Oh, okay, they don't have a producer on here. Gotcha. Well, that's even better because uh, I do like so he had a that, that doesn't Toro. mean that just means his hands were in it. Uh, it doesn't mean he had complete control over it. There are other producers listed, but generally, whenever Guillermo's name is associated with something, it's not too terrible. Usually, so, I don't. I don't think I've seen anything of his that I've hated. Pan's Labyrinth was garbage. Whoa, what? dude! I'm just kidding. I knew that I would get that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my you favorite take films. That back. Oh, I take it back. I get, instantly because I haven't even seen it. You get out of my house. You haven't seen it? No. Oh, really? Well, it is a real fairy tale of a movie. I will um, say that. I was expecting more of a reaction from you guys on the second thing, not the first thing. That's interesting. Um. Oh my god, you've never seen it? But no, you guys are very calm. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> you haven't seen something, you haven't seen something. That's that's what I love about Anyhow. you, Clark. You're so sensible. Uh, whatever. What have Buttering you watched, read, or been up to lately? I'm going to let Jared go um, because he's our guest. Yeah, hey, I really appreciate that. Thank you. You deserve it. <laughs> um. What have I watched, read, or been up to? You know, not a whole lot. I've just been working from home. Uh, I, I guess I have been playing. Um, I picked up a game called Hades from from Supergiant. They did uh, Transistor. I that a lot. I love that game. I've I, I think I've just gotten through my 110th run. Um, I've got most almost everything maxed out. And for 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 the listeners, basically, it's a uh, it's a roguelike, right? So you're, you're you're the son of Hades, and you're trying to escape the depths of hell to, to find your mom uh, up, up on the mortal plane. Um, but it's really neat because as you're fighting your way out, the gods from Olympus will give you boons and different boons work with each other differently. So each playthrough is a little bit boon? different. Just really is snappy. Like, like little power-ups that make your character stronger as he fights through? Yeah, yeah so like uh, Zeus can cool. give you the ability to shoot chain lightning, a um, whole bunch of stuff like that. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. That's really Dude, cool. I want to talk about Polaroid, by the way, because I watched it, and it was bad. Okay. And I want my, I want my time back. Okay. I want um, my time back. Well, here's your time now to, to talk more about it. What, what was so bad about Polaroid? Okay, so, you know, remember the Are You Afraid of the Dark uh, back in the 90s? Duh. It was a... It was a kid's show where they told scary stories. And one of them, there was this camera where there was a little monster that would make bad things happen to people. So they took that concept and they turned it into a movie. And it turns out, I'm going to spoil the whole movie for you. It's a pedophile who like touching little kids and his angry spirits back. And he just wants to kill anyone who's, who has a picture taken with his magical Polaroid camera. And the girl 
takes a picture of the ghost and then destroys the picture and then the day is saved. The end. I smell uh, I smell an Oscar, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Um I it, it was one of those bad movies that is on Netflix because I watch horror movies. They don't recommend it. Don't watch it. You know, the sad part is, is I'm going to end up watching it now so I can hate it with you so we can be hating brothers. Well, if you watch it, we can talk about it and we can complain about it. We can go more into detail over why it shredded out pieces of your your hope for humanity. <laughs> well, maybe I can bring us back to an uplifted moment now. <laughs> uh, Please do. So I checked out a new video game called Pumpkin Jack. It's just a demo. The game isn't officially Pumpkin released. Jack. Yes. But I want to buy this game as soon as it comes out. It's medieval meets Jack and Daxter. Um, that's exactly how they describe it. And it is probably more accurate uh, than any other description that's out there. But basically, you're Pumpkin Jack. You're this uh, Jack Scarecrow lit up pumpkin head kind of guy. And you get to run around, jump around. It's It's got some puzzles to it. Um, it reminds me of my old school PS2 games, but with updated graphics. Very, very fun, um, kind of crude humor. I don't know. The demo was a little short, in my opinion. I wish there was more, but I think that's also because I liked it so much that I wish there was more. And uh, and yeah, so shout out to Pumpkin Jack and um, go download the demo on Steam if you haven't ever heard of it. Um, and you like spooky, fun kind of games, go, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. The guys over at uh, Grief Burrito, uh, podcast I've been listening Grief. to. Grief, yeah. Um, they brought it up uh, about a month ago, I think. They're primarily mm -hmm. like a video game um, podcast. But uh, but yeah, right. I don't know. I've, I've been talking to them a lot on Twitter. And um, they had mentioned to play it. So I checked it out. And I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's the, Anything that has the name Burrito in it has me sold. Because I'm hungry right now. Well, they have a spooky um, burrito episode once a month spooky. where they talk about something spoopy spoopy oh dude, that's interesting um yeah. like I, I legitimately have never heard of them before like as as like canned as that sounded like no i'm i'm interested in soul i let's uh i don't know guys what do you think you think we should uh we should wrap this up we should uh talk about maybe do some plugs here jared would you like to do a plug no i'd like to remain completely <laughs> I, I I honestly don't have any uh, I don't have any uh, socials worth worth sharing, so it's all you guys. Yeah, cool. Well, if you want to check us out, we can do a we can do a shameless plug right now. I understand that times are rough with uh, with this recession as well as the coronavirus kind of hitting us right now. But just know that you can always reach out to us via Twitter or Instagram. Check us out there or email our social media is two guys horror pod that's the number two guys horror pod and our email address is two guys and some horror with the full word two spelled out instead of the number. and any emails so, uh, you guys send us we will read online um mm -hmm. and i mean even if you dm us in a tweet if that's easier or dm us on instagram if that's easier uh we will also do a shout out to you there and Send us ideas for movies you guys want us to watch and review. If there's something that's just burning a hole in your heart and you want us to do it, let us know. We'll gladly check it check out. Check out our Twitter, for sure. Like, Curtis puts a lot of effort into these. Uh, we put in our top five slasher movies. Oh, put yeah. In our top five uh, were movies. Put in our type romantic comedies. Like, things like that. Things that are really important to us. By the way, um, spoilers, my number one is Return to Me with David Duchovny and... Uh, uh, I'm blinking on her name, but yeah. Your number one favorite Billy horror Driver. film? Uh, no, romantic comedy. Oh, romantic comedy. Oh yeah, we oh, should yeah. do that we'll... one next. That should be the next theme. Oh, uh, we'll do. <laughs> we're actually probably gonna. Next so time. I, we're gonna do a compilation also of all of our favorite stuff, um, and Clark and I are just gonna sit and talk about that one day, um, and post that up as an episode, just so you guys can get to know us a little bit better. It'll be like a trailer episode for us. We'll keep it super short if we can, roughly about 15, 20 minutes max, um, where you kind of just get to know Clark and I and our and our horror favorites. Um, so if you aren't following us on Twitter, do so, because we post about that kind of stuff on there. Like today I just did um, 
Terror Tuesdays, Curtis's top five slasher, and yesterday was Maniacal Mondays with Clark's favorite top five slashers. And Clark is getting a lot more likes and love on Twitter than I am. Um, that's, and you know my that's ego's not fine. True. My ego's totally Look, fine. Man. We Jared, love you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Jared, you're hey, the best. Thanks for having me again, guys. It was, of course. It was awesome. Yeah. Always. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs>